called the order. The invocation will be said by myself, and then we'll have the presentation of colors by the Long Sailors Sailor Division, U.S. Naval Sea Cadet Corps here in town. So they will come up after I do the invocation. After that, we'll have the Pledge of Allegiance by Commissioner Wilson and the roll call. Everybody, please stand. <coughs> Our Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight to ask your watchful eye to be over us as we go about our government meeting with the, for the cities of the city of Okoy. We ask that you guide us, lead us the way we need to do, and ask us to help control what we do and then be in the governance of the city. We ask in your holy name, amen. 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 Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, in liberty and justice for all. We have a few words here. Everybody be seated. Thank you, sir. Good evening, Mayor Johnson and Commissioners. I am Lutz, uh, I'm Ensign Larry Reinhardt, Commanding Officer of the Lone Sailor Division. Tonight's colors were presented by the Sea Cadets of the, of the unit. Those cadets are Chief Cameron Rout, Chief Olivia Schwab, Petty Officer Second Class Jared Fairchild, and Petty Officer Second Class Elizabeth Giovacchini. Performing color guard is uh, one of many different skills that we teach the cadets on a monthly basis at the Big Netty Center that we utilize here in the city of Okoe. The U.S. Naval Sea Cadet Corps provides a compelling and life-challenging programs to America's youth that teach them how the values of teamwork, discipline, and ser uh, service and ethical leadership through our passionate all-volunteer force and partnerships with the U.S. Navy and the U.S. Coast Guard. There are actually 400 units throughout the United States, Guam, and Puerto Rico, and we happen to be one of them that's stationed here in Okoe. What sets the Sea Cadets apart from uh, junior ROTC units located in high schools throughout the United States is the fact that the U.S. Naval Sea Cadet Corps does not conduct daily history classes. On the other hand, we actually provide hand-on uh, hand train, training to the cadets on a monthly basis. In fact, that training takes place from August through the next May, and then in June and July, the cadets actually go off to advanced trainings where they actually learn how to do aviation, um, advance and basic medical, advance and basic uh, scuba, seamanship, and other types of uh, other types of career fields that they would be exposed to, not only in the U.S. military but also in the civilian world. So we like to provide the cadets an opportunity to learn more about what's out there, but at the same time actually provide them a basis. Some of the cadets actually earn certifications that come out of these trainings. So, for instance, the scuba training they actually do become Patty scuba. Uh, Patty scuba dive training. Uh, cadets that actually go to culinary training actually learn how to cook and they actually get their uh, safe serve certifications. So we, it's, a, it's a very valuable program and one that we actually do here in the city of Okoe. Uh, our unit was set here in uh, 2018. We actually started August of 2018 with eight cadets and today we're at just under 25. So in the past two, two and a half years we've actually expanded. Um, it was with the help of the mayor, commissioners, and uh, Commander Townsend 
that we've had to be able to have the opportunity to actually uh, create a division, but also expand it as much as well. So um, this past year with COVID, obviously wearing face masks, social distancing, um, everything else that we've had to all learn how to do throughout the year. And then sometimes we get one rule one day and the next day we get another rule and we're all having to bounce back and forth. What we did was we created a challenge coin. And so in the US military, they hand out challenge coins to, every me uh, to members of units. And sometimes it's for doing something really well. In other cases, to showcase that you were a member of a particular unit. So our challenge coin actually has uh, this, the unit's emblem on it, which uh, showcases that we're based out of here in Okoe. But if you flip it on the back side, it's got a picture of Gumby. So it's the, little, the character from back in the 70s. And it says, Semper Gumby, always flexible. So what we have seen is that we've had to be very flexible in a lot of, the thing, a lot of activities that we do with the cadets. But I also know that the city of Okoe's had to be flexible. And for that, I wanted to say thank you all for allowing us to use the Vignetti Center throughout the year. And I wanted to present every member of the board um, challenge coins if I could. To who, who you want to give it to? To the board. Okay, come on up. Okay. <clears throat> that is gold, right? Thank <laughs> Flexible. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. You are welcome. Thank you very much. You are welcome. You are welcome. Thank you. So Mr. Townsend, we said hello. Appreciate it again. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Good job. Card. Roll call. Commissioner Brenson? Here. Commissioner Wilson? Here. Mayor Johnson? Here. Commissioner Fersener? Here. Commissioner Oliver? Here. All right. <clears throat> Before I go to presentations, I'm going to go ahead and read this. City Hall is open to the public. However, attendance inside the Oakwood Commission Chambers may be limited to accommodate social distancing and is subject to the governor's executive orders. Any interested party may be heard during the public comments and public hearing portion of the meeting. In order to participate remotely, members of the public should call 407-554-7118 or email citizens at okoy.org in advance and indicate the item you would like to address. At the appropriate time during the meeting, city staff will contact you via phone and patch you into the meeting where you can share your comments and or questions. Comments and questions received via email will become public records and provided to the city commissioners in advance of the meeting. All right, I've got one here I need to read. Uh, proclamation. Proclamation of the, uh, whereas our country is made up of great people from all over the world, where, who are declared equal not only in freedom but also in justice, and whereas our nation was conceived on July the 4th, 1776, with the Declaration of Independence. The timeless statement being, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable alienable rights, that among those are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And whereas on January the 1st, 1863, President Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation, providing that all persons held as slaves within any, within any state or designated part of the state shall be then, thenceforth and forever free. And whereas on May the 20th, 1865, 11 days after the end of the Civil War and two years after the proclamation first issued by President Abraham Lincoln, freed those enslaved in southern states. U Union Pr Brigadier General Edward McCook formally announced President Abraham Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation from the steps of the Knott House in Tallahassee. And whereas on May the 20th, 2021, we celebrate 156 years of freedom. Now therefore be it resolved that the City Commission of the City of Okoy does hereby proclaim May the 20th, 2021 as Florida Emancipation Day in witness whereof I have 
going to set my hand and cause the seal of the city of Oakwood, Florida to be affixed this 18th day of May, 2021. All right, we have one lady who wants to make a comment. I'm gonna go ahead and do that at this time while we're reading this thing. It's uh, Tiffany Hughes. We have a proclamation in, in a, in a, in a uh, binder here. We're gonna put it on the wall. It goes on the wall outside in the lobby. The plaque, I'm sorry. You got three minutes, turn that clock on. Good evening, Mayor Johnson, uh, council members of the Ocoee community. My name is Tiffany Hughes. I'm the president of the Orange County Branch NAACP. Uh, this is Shaniqua Rose, the branch's secretary. We just wanted to uh, thank you all in recognizing Florida Emancipation Day as the day in which uh, enslaved people were notified in Florida that they were free. If anyone is interested in the uh, NAACP of Orange County, you can visit us online, orangecountynaacp.org. We also have our monthly meetings on the fourth Monday at 6.30, so that'll be next week. All of that information is also on our Facebook, um, and you can uh, get some information from us there. Good evening, everyone, um, Mayor and Commissioners. Uh, on behalf of the NAACP, we just want to say that we're here and open to any dialogues as we work to our mission, which is uh, ending racial injustice. And we're here for you. Um, as Ms. Hughes said, we're available. Um, O-C-F-L-N-A-A-C-P at gmail.com. And we want to thank you for this proclamation. You all have a great evening. Thank you. We'll have one made up to give you two. Okay. Just call Sherry. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, West Orange, West Oaks Library Branch Manager, Sarah Ronflis. Thanks for pronounce that one. Thank you. Good evening, let me pull up my presentation. Thank you, Mayor and Commissioners, for allowing me to speak with you tonight. Um, my name is Sarah Cronflay. I'm the new branch manager at the West Oaks Library and Genealogy Center. Um, I'm here tonight just to share with you some things we have coming up at the library and of course give you some information about all the wonderful benefits that you receive with your Orange County Library card. The West Oaks branch has been serving the Ocoee community for over 19 years. In fact, our um, 20th anniversary celebration will be happening this August. Um, we're really honored and um, fortunate to have been in the Ocoee community for this long and uh, offering some of our great services and resources to the residents. Um, we'll be celebrating all month with different virtual events, um, take home crafts and activities for families, and we'll also be displaying a community quilt project where customers who come into the branch will receive their own square of fabric that they can decorate in any way that they want and then turn it back in and some of our fiber arts instructors are gonna sew those together um, to display in the branch and just commemorate our time in Ocoee. Um, I would encourage you to stop by or check out our website for more information on our celebration for that month. Um, and I also just wanted to um, share this fun little piece of history that I came across at the branch um, and some of our files. If you see the picture on the right, that's a proclamation from the city of Ocoee for um, West Oaks Branch Library Month in August 2006 for our five-year anniversary. Um, and I thought this was just great to share to show the long-standing relationship that the city has had with the library for all these years. Some other exciting news um, that we actually just found out last week uh, is we have been awarded a planting grant from the Florida Wildflower Foundation. Uh, that will help us to transform some of our landscaping at the branch into a Florida native plant garden. Um, and we'll be having our grand opening celebration this October. Uh, we'll celebrate with a story walk, a scavenger hunt, rock painting, and different handouts and information about the garden and the importance of Florida native plants in our community. We'll also be hosting a monthly nature club and different events for children. Again, educating about the environment and the important, uh, importance of environmental sustainability. 
So I would uh, invite you all share more information about our grand opening that we'll be having this October. Of course, I couldn't present about the library without sharing some of the wonderful things that you um, have for free with your Orange County Library card. Some of them, of course, you'll probably be familiar with, but I think others you might not know that we offer. Uh, with your Orange County Library card, of course, you get access to our wonderful collection of books, DVDs, music CDs, magazines. We also have a very robust digital collection, um, so we have free apps that you can download on your phone or tablet to read ebooks or stream music, movies, um, or listen to audiobooks wherever you are. Orange County also offers free home delivery for all residents in Orange County. So if you're not able to make it in the branch, um, you can just go to our website from the comfort of your home, order your materials, and we'll deliver them to you for free. The library offers hundreds of events and classes each month um, for all ages and uh, for any sort of interest or topic that you uh, might be interested in. For children, of course, of all ages, that means story times and storytelling events, clubs and meetups for older kids, author events, um, and different hangouts and crafting and STEAM sort of programs. For adults, um, you can learn a new life skill or get more interested in a different hobby that you might have. Um, for technology, if you're interested in brushing up on your Excel or learning how to design your own website um, or even more advanced coding and robotics, we have wonderful instructors at the library who each week are teaching classes on those type of things. One thing we've seen a lot of um, interest in, in lately is our fiber arts, and that includes sewing, embroidery, crochet, and knitting. Whether you, um, you know, are an advanced and you know how to knit or crochet, or you're just uh, starting out, we have classes um, to learn the different stitches and projects and to create your own things. We have opportunities to speak with our um, instructors if you are working on something and you're not sh quite sure how to fix it or you know maybe what you did wrong. So all of those things can be found on our website and it's a really uh, a vast inventory of, of events and classes that we offer for free. Something that might be a little less known is our free databases um, that you can access through our website. Um, again, this covers any sort of topic or interest that you might have. I just like to tell people if you want to learn more about something, we probably have a database for that. Um, that includes for kids, uh, one that I like to share is BrainFuse. That offers free uh, live tutoring for students in any subject. So if they're doing their homework or need to study for a test, they can use the BrainFuse database, pick their subject, and they'll be connected with a live tutor who they can share their problem with and get help with their homework. That especially helps for some of the older kids when it maybe gets past our ability to help them with some of the math or other things like that. Um, another area that I wanted to highlight is our job skills databases. So one thing we know that a lot of people have struggled with this past year in our community and beyond is finding a job or keeping a job. And the library has a lot of ways to help people who are looking for a job build their resume, build a cover letter, and even practice uh, interview skills and interview with someone live um, to get them ready to get that job. I also wanted to share about our upcoming summer reading program. That'll kick off at the end of this month. Summer is our busiest time at the library. Of course, the kids are out of school. They're looking for things to do. Um, we believe that it's important to keep kids active and engaged over the summer. We want to help prevent um, summer brain drain for the kids in our community. And that's why we offer daily events, um, again, in all sorts of areas and topics. We have live performances. Um, things related to STEAM, um, and we also run a challenge where if kids read at least 600 minutes over the summer, they'll receive a goodie bag and be entered to rent some of our grand prizes, which includes local attraction tickets, um, bicycles, microscopes, a lot of fun things that kids are interested in. And that's for um, from ages 0 to 17, so we have something for tweens and teens and even the early learners too. And lastly, I just wanted to leave you with some pictures of our refreshed branch. So if you weren't aware, um, November, December of last year, we actually closed. 
and we got some new carpet, new paint, new furniture, new shelving. Um, we have a really vibrant new children's area now, a new genealogy center. So I really encourage you to stop by, see the new branch. We're, we really love it and we're really excited to um, serve customers in, in our new space. And that's all I had for you tonight. Um, always feel free to um, reach out to me with any questions or ideas. I'm really excited to work with the city more on different initiatives or partnerships. And you should actually see in your um, bag, I just gave you this little uh, swag bag with different library materials in it. Um, some of the things I talked about tonight gives you a little more information and then just some fun stuff in there um, for you. So thank you for having me tonight. Thank you very much. We appreciate the libraries out there. I remember when it came up, it was a big deal for us. So Thank you. We're really yeah. glad to have you there. Thank excellent, you. Excellent facility. Yes. Anybody Thank else? Yeah, I just oh. want to say, Mayor, I think maybe it would be a good idea if the city of Ocoee had a square embroidered with the city of Ocoee symbol on it. For the, yeah. the I, yes, I could get that for you. And yeah. You yeah. Me, I'll come by and get it. Okay. We'll get yeah. It care of yeah, that would be, we and would love that. Nice idea for yeah. 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 Uh, one, one question. For all those who are listening, uh, who may not know what the Genealogy Center actually does, can you share a little bit more? Sure. About um, so yeah, Orange County um, has a genealogy collection of uh, over 40,000 items. We also employ a full-time genealogy specialist, um, and she really is the backbone of a lot of services that we offer to customers. Um, she does weekly events, so if you're interested in genealogy or family research, or you got um, you know, one of those DNA tests and you need help interpreting the results or something, um, Allison teaches classes on the very basics um, from census records and immigration records to help you find your ancestors, all the way to very um, detailed DNA interpretation and um, and using DNA to connect you with, with members of your family that you might, you might not have known about before. Um, and we also have um, a book a pro service, which means you can meet with our genealogy specialist one-on-one -on -one for some in-depth research. So if you discovered a brick wall and you really, you might think there's missing records or something like that, um, she can meet one-on-one -on -one to assist you with that. And I always just like to share about genealogy is, is that it's really like you're being a detective and once you start, you might not stop. Um, and it's, it's really, I think, rewarding for a lot of people to, to delve into their own family history and, and learn those stories. All right, thank you. I do have a question. Sure. Um, with your library cards, um, is there an expiration date on library cards? I've, I've had one a long, had one a long time ago. I haven't used it in in years. Uh, well, Google so. well Google came on the scene. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, with the library cards, uh, do, do you have to get them renewed every so often? Or so they do expire after four years. Um, your account doesn't go away. That's just where we want to make sure we have your updated information, especially because we do the home delivery. We don't want to send something to the wrong ad address. So if you think it's been a little while, your account probably is still in there, um, and you can just come and renew it. It's very easy. You don't. It's not like creating a whole new account. So it does technically expire every four years, but we just update you, make sure that we've got your most recent contact info, and then you're good to go. Well, I'll come and update my information. Great. Thank we you. We look forward to seeing you. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate you coming Thank you. by. Um, next is uh, staff reports. Thank you, Mayor. Um, have one item this evening. It's an emergency item. You have a copy in front of you on the dais. Um, approval for the granting of 25-foot easements for five properties along 3rd Street. Uh, what we're doing here is getting an easement to extend a water line to several properties that are unincorporated at this point. However, they will be filling out intent to annex forms and when they're legally adjacent um, they will be annexed into the city. This also allows us to um, expand and provide water service to additional areas uh, in the city and unincorporated. There's no cost associated with this. Uh, this is just a granting of easements. All right. So we need a motion. Approval. Motion and approval, please. All right. I need um, 
you have anything to read on there? No. All right. All right. Anybody discussing? Any other discussion? If not, I need a motion. I'll make that motion. Motion made by Commissioner Wilson. We do item, emergency item, grant the 25 foot easement. I hear a second. I'll second it. Uh, Commissioner Firstner? No, Oliver. Oliver, uh, was that uh, Commissioner Oliver? Yeah, I'll second it. All right. All right. Any more comments? No more comments? Let's vote. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Mayor. That's all I have. All right. Thank you. Um, the public comments section, I got two comments, but they'll be after at the end because these, these are not pertinent to the ones now. So the two that's got public comments will be at the end. Uh, just, just a quick motion to let everybody know the city has put the civility code up on the outside walls before you come into the chamber. We probably should have done that a long time ago, but it means if we all have to hold civility to our in our comments and what we do in here. So, and it's also on the back of your speakers form. So we're going to start doing it and stick to it. So, all right. Consent agenda. We'll make a motion to approve unless there's well, a comment. All right, I'll take the motion to approve. Do I hear a second? I'll second it. I'd like to pull a, pull a couple items. Hold on just a minute. Oh, I get through. Seconded by Commissioner Brinson. All right, we have somebody wanting to make comments on which one? I just want to pull uh, two and three quickly. Just had a couple of questions for those. All right, hold on. Just going to pull two and three to talk. Let's go ahead and uh, we got a motion to do it. We'll do the items one, four, five, six, seven, eight. Three and four, two and three, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. So that's what's up on the motion. Any more comment? Let's vote. They all care, all those carry except for two and three. And now we're going to have Commissioner Oliver. Actually, uh, two and three are, are, my question actually pertains to both of them. Um, the advisory board, one is for the police department advisory board, the other is for the uh, HRDB. Um, the question I have is, after we approve the members for the uh, uh, for item number two for the uh, police department, as well as the item for uh, the uh, HRDB, how many uh, available seats will there be uh, after uh, approval, after the night's approval? Okay. So for item number two for the police, advisory board we have one application for consideration so once um, if this is approved there will be three vacant seats and for item number three we have a reappointment of one of the members as well as two appointments for consideration um, if this is approved we will have three vacant seats as well And again, I always, I always like to pull those items because I want to know how many is left, how many seats are available, so that way um, we can uh, at, at least uh, announce to the citizens that, again, here's another opportunity that you will have. Here's two boards, two excellent boards, the, the uh, police advisory board as well as HRDB board to get involved with things that's going on in the city. So we have, again, three seats, as you heard, three seats in the, uh, the police advisory board, three seats with HRDB. If you have any interest in those boards, uh, please contact the clerk's office and um, she can uh, tell you how to fill out an application. That's all I had for them. All right. Well, uh, before we vote on, I'll make a comment on three. I'm going to be voting no on three for one and one person on the thing I'm not voting to reinstate. The problem of this is I've been on the board for quite a while and not, does not actively work on any of the projects and actively is negative to everything we do on that board and has been negative to it all the city stuff. So I won't be voting. I'll be voting no on three. All right. Now, do I hear a motion for item two and three? I'll make that motion. Do I hear a second? A second. Seconded by Commissioner Furster. All right. No more comments. Let's vote. Thank you. All right. Uh, huh? Did we vote on two and three? Yeah. I said two and three. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Now I got to flip all the way over here. All right. Public hearings. All right. Tonight is, uh, looks like we have a lot of first readings.
So we'll go through them. He's going to read off the board or the numbers, and then we we use, we won't have any comments. The comments will come back on uh, uh, June the fifth. Yeah, June the fifteenth will be when the second reading and the comments take effect. All right. All right. Let's start with uh, number fifteen. First reading of ordinance for West Orange Park properties. Second right. LLC. You got that. Yep, this is the annexation ordinance. This is an ordinance of the city of Ocoee, Florida, annexing into the corporate limits of the city of Ocoee, Florida, certain real property containing approximately 3.08 acres located on the west, on West Road, approximately 850 feet east of Ocoee Apopka Road, pursuant to the application submitted by the property owner. Finding said annexation to be consistent with the Ocoee Comprehensive Plan, the Ocoee City Code, providing for and authorizing the updating of official city maps, providing direction to the city clerk, providing for severability, repealing inconsistent ordinances, providing for an effective date. And the rezoning ordinance is an ordinance of the City of Ocoee, Florida, changing the zoning classification from Orange County A1, Rural Agricultural, to City of Ocoee C2, Community Commercial, on certain uh, real property containing approximately 3.08 acres, located on West Road, approximately 850 feet east of Ocoee Popka Road, pursuant to the application submitted by the property owner. Finding such zoning to be consistent with the Ocoee Comprehensive Plan, providing for and authorizing the revision of the official city zoning map, repealing inconsistent ordinances, providing for severability, providing for an effective date. All right, that will be heard at the June the 15th, 2021 meeting. All right, item number 16, first reading of ordinance for Barkerville Plan Unit Development, PUD. Uh, you have that one? Yep, this is a substantial amendment to the Barcaritaville PUD PSP. This is an ordinance of the City of Ocoee, Florida, approving a substantial amendment to the land use plan for the Barcaritaville PUD for certain real property comprising approximately 8.13 acres located on the east side of Tommen Boulevard and northeast of the intersection of Windermere Road and Tommen Road, pursuant to the application submitted by the property owner, amending the list of approved uses to include indoor self-storage, finding consistency with the Ocoee Comprehensive Plan, repealing inconsistent ordinances, providing for severability, providing an effective date. All right, that'll be heard on June the 15th at the next meeting. All right, number 17, first reading of ordinance for 54 Ruiz Street, small scale comprehensive plan amendment and rezoning to plan unit development, PUD, and PUD land use plan. Okay, this is the comp plan amendment, an ordinance of the City of Ocoee, Florida, amending the Ocoee Comprehensive Plan as adopted on September 18, 1991, by Ordinance 9128 as amended, amending the future land use map of the Ocoee Comprehensive Plan to change the future land use designation from low density residential to commercial for certain real property containing approximately 0.25 acres located on the north side of Ruiz Street and the northeast corner of Lyman Street and Ruiz Street providing for and authorizing the revision of the official city of future land use map, repealing and conflicting ordinances, providing for severability, providing for an effective date. And the rezoning ordinance is an ordinance of the city of Ocoee, Florida, changing the zoning classification from R1 single family dwelling to Ocoee PUD planned unit development on certain real property containing approximately 0.25 acres located on the north side of Ruiz Street at the northeast corner of the intersection of Lyman Street and Ruiz Street pursuant to the application submitted by the property owner, finding such zoning to be consistent with the Ocoee Comprehensive Plan, providing for and authorizing the revision of the official city zoning map, repealing inconsistent ordinances, providing for severability, providing for an effective date. All right, same thing, be heard again on June the 15th uh, for the second reading. All right, item 18, first reading of ordinance for 409 Okoy Apopka Road Plan Unit Development, PUD, annexation and rezoning, for PUD and PUD land use plan. All right, this is the annexation ordinance, an ordinance of the city of Ocoee, Florida, annexing into the corporate limits of the city of Ocoee, Florida, certain real property containing approximately 4.76 acres, located on the east side of Ocoee Popka Road, approximately 500 feet north of West Silver Star Road, pursuant to the application submitted by the property owner. Finding said annexation to be consistent with the Ocoee Comprehensive Plan, the Ocoee City Code, providing for and authorizing the updating official city maps, providing direction to the city clerk, providing for severability, repealing inconsistent ordinances, providing for an effective date. And the rezoning ordinance is an ordinance of the city of Ocoee, Florida, changing the zoning classification from Orange County A1, Rural Agricultural, to city of Ocoee PUD planned unit development on certain real property containing approximately 4.76 acres 
located on the, uh, the east side of Ocoee Popka Road, approximately 500 feet north of West Silver Star Road, pursuant to the application submitted by the property owner, finding such zoning to be consistent with the Ocoee Comprehensive Plan, providing for and authorizing the revision of the official city zoning map, repealing inconsistent ordinances, providing for severability, providing for an effective date. All right. That'll be the same thing, June the 15th, 6-15. All right. Item number 20, first reading of ordinance for number the- Number 19. Number 19, I thought we were. Okay, sorry about that. First reading of ordinance for AP and AG Investment Group, LLC, at 529 First Street, annexation and rezoning project. Annexation ordinance is an ordinance of the City of Ocoee, Florida, annexing into the corporate limits of the City of Ocoee, Florida, certain real property containing approximately 0.16 acres located on the east side of First Street, approximately 289 feet south of Center Street and about 338 feet northeast of the intersection of Nay Street and First Street, pursuant to the application submitted by the property owner. Finding said annexation to be consistent with the Ocoee Comprehensive Plan, the Ocoee City Code, providing for and authorizing the updated official city maps, providing direction to the city clerk, providing for severability, repealing and consistent ordinances, providing for an effective date. And the rezoning ordinance is an ordinance of the City of Ocoee, Florida, changing the zoning classification from Orange County R1 single family to City of Ocoee R1 single family dwelling on certain real property containing approximately 0.16 acres, located on the east side of First Street, approximately 289 feet south of Center Street, and about 338 feet northeast of the intersection of Nay Street and First Street, pursuant to the application submitted by the property owner. Finding such zoning to be consistent with the Ocoee Comprehensive Plan, providing for and authorizing the revision of the official city zoning map, repealing inconsistent ordinances, providing for severability, providing for an effective date. All right, same thing, June the 15th, 615 meet. Item number 20, first reading of ordinance for the Guerrero property at 102 Worst Road, annexation and rezoning project. This is the annexation ordinance, an ordinance of the City of Ocoee, Florida, annexing into the corporate limits of the City of Ocoee, Florida, certain real property containing approximately 0.17 acres located directly to the north side of Worst Road, approximately 175 e feet east of North Lakewood Avenue, pursuant to the application submitted by the property owner. Finding said annexation to be consistent with the Ocoee Comprehensive Plan, the Ocoee City Code, providing for and authorizing the updating of official city maps, providing direction to the city clerk, providing for severability, repealing inconsistent ordinances, providing for an effective date. And the rezoning ordinance is an ordinance of the City of Ocoee, Florida, changing the zoning classification from Orange County R2 single family to City of Ocoee R1 single family dwelling on certain real property containing approximately 0.17 acres, located directly on the north side of Worst Road, approximately 175 feet east of North Lakewood Avenue, pursuant to the application submitted by the property owner. Finding such zoning to be consistent with the Ocoee Comprehensive Plan, providing for and authorizing the revision of the official city zoning map, repealing inconsistent ordinances, providing for severability, providing for an effective date. Same thing. That item will be on agenda June 15th at 6.15. All right, item 21. First reading of ordinance for Ocoee Rental Trust Properties at 503 2nd Street Annexation and Rezoning Project. Okay, this is the annexation ordinance, an ordinance of the City of Ocoee, Florida, annexing into the corporate limits of the City of Ocoee, Florida, certain real property containing approximately 0.25 acres located on the east side of 2nd Street, approximately 510 feet south of Center Street and about 735 feet north of East Silver Star Road, pursuant to the application submitted by the property owner. Finding said annexation to be consistent with the Ocoee Comprehensive Plan, the Ocoee City Code, providing for and authorizing the updating official city maps, providing direction to the city clerk, providing for severability, repealing inconsistent ordinances, providing for an effective date. And the rezoning ordinance is an ordinance of the City of Ocoee, Florida, changing the zoning classification from Orange County R1 single family to City of Ocoee R1 single family dwelling on certain real property containing approximately 0.25 acres, located on the east side of 2nd Street, approximately 510 feet south of Center Street, and about 735 feet north of East Silver Star Road, pursuant to the application submitted by the property owner. Finding such zoning to be consistent with the Ocoee Comprehensive Plan, providing for and authorizing the revision of the official city zoning map, repealing inconsistent ordinances, providing for severability, providing for an effective date. Same thing, June the 15th, 6-15 meeting. All right, first reading of ordinance for Oak. First reading of ordinance for Oakway Rental Trust Properties at 518 2nd Street, annexation and rezoning. 
All right, the annexation ordinance is an ordinance of the city of Ocoee, Florida, annexing into the corporate limits of the city of Ocoee, Florida, certain real property containing approximately 0.15 acres located on the west side of 2nd Street, approximately 276 feet south of Center Street, and about 312 feet northeast of the intersection of Nay Street and 2nd Street, pursuant to the application submitted by the property owner. Finding said annexation to be consistent with the Ocoee Comprehensive Plan, the Ocoee City Code, providing for and authorizing the updating of official city maps, providing direction to the city clerk, providing for severability, repealing inconsistent ordinances, providing for an effective date. And the rezoning ordinance is an ordinance of the city of Ocoee, Florida, changing the zoning classification from Orange County R1 single family to city of Ocoee R1 single family dwelling on certain uh, real property containing approximately 0.15 acres located on the west side of 2nd Street, approximately 276 feet south of Center Street and about 312 feet northeast of the intersection of Nay Street and 2nd Street pursuant to the application submitted by the property owner. Finding such zoning to be consistent with the Ocoee Comprehensive Plan, providing for and authorizing the revision of the official city zoning map, repealing inconsistent ordinances, providing for severability, providing for an effective date. Same thing, June the 15th, 615 meeting. All right, second reading of ordinance with public hearings, none. Regular agenda, item 23, discussion and direction of commissioners, announcements on the agenda. City clerk. This is just on the agenda as, um, as I guess, a request of the city commission at the last meeting. Um, I provided with my staff report minutes from the last two years just so that on the sections where the announcements would be just so that it was understood, you know, at least understood why we had made the decision to um, remove what we thought was um, just something that wasn't Did no comments were made. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you. We'll, we'll discuss it now. All right. It's open for discussion. Well, I'll be happy to start. All right. Okay. Commissioner Wilson. I've written some things down, so I hope I get them in logical order. I have some comments to make. For the past several months, I felt that our meetings have grown more and more distant for the purpose for which we are here to handle city business. I've reviewed the agenda outline of other cities our size in the area and compared them to ours. I'm amazed when I see how much more efficient the meetings of other jurisdictions operate, that I'd like to see us do a better job of handling our city business. I have a couple comments to make at this point and I probably make a motion at the end. Um, I believe that we should have one citizen public comment period. It's ridiculous that we have multiple citizen comment periods. We should have one period with a three minute time limit per speaker. If someone wants to make comments on an item on the agenda that is not a public hearing, then it happens during this period. There should also be a rule of decorum that no one is allowed to speak from the audience. This is not a question answer session. We should allow the citizens to make the comments. This is just a simple saying thank you after they make their comments. If, this is not, if we want to make comments as a commissioner, we can do that during our comment time. But I think we should be um, should, we should be gracious and thank them for their comments. I believe that we also should have one staff report, city, manager, city manager's business section. I'm not sure why we have two city manager business points for staff report. I feel that only one is necessary. I do not ever recall a city manager ever needing two periods to accomplish any necessary staff business. I believe also one commissioner announcement comment period. I'm sorry if some of the commissioners feel it's necessary to bring up huge lists of things, but this is not what the time is for. The period is for announcements and the small items that may come up at the last minute. This period is not for going over lengthy lists of items that could or should be discussed with the city manager or emailed to the city manager prior to the meeting. I propose a 10 minute time limit per elected official during this period. Regarding the consent agenda, I'm not sure what we can do, but I have a comment. If we're going to pull something off the consent agenda, then we should have at least discussed it, I believe, with the city manager, which I do. And he can speak for that. I speak to him probably a couple times a week and probably right before the meeting, days before the meeting, I go over the agenda with him. We get the agenda packet enough ahead of time to be able to resolve most questions directly with Rob before we have to pull several items off the consent agenda. These items have been vetted every way possible when they're placed on the consent agenda. And we should not be pulling four or five items every meeting. That's why it's necessary, I feel, to talk to our city manager or our assistant city manager. 
All this means that we're not doing our due diligence prior to a meeting. I would encourage you to watch some of the other meetings of other jurisdictions to see how professionally they are run. I have a, I've looked at one of the Winter Garden Commission meetings. They finished in 45 minutes. And I guess now I'm gonna come with some random thoughts. Um, I've heard us discuss, and I say, I wanna keep everything, city business, working on city business. You know, I hear discussions about transparency and that we don't have transparency. I don't see where, why we don't. We have an agenda on the web. We have an agenda posted 24 hours for viewing 24 hours out in the hallway. We have TV access. How much more do we want to be transparent? And especially when our citizens can call us and talk to us individually to find out what's going on. Um, I have a suggestion, let's see. I'm sorry, I'm going all different directions here. One other suggestion would be that we'd have a 10 minute, kind of a, I don't want to call it a town hall, but a 10 minute after the meeting is adjourned, if a commissioner wants to continue to speak while the TV is on, that they want to make general announcements to their residents, it's an opportunity that we could do that. Um, it's not a question and answer, it's not a time bringing staff out to answer questions, it would be a chance to have somewhat of a town hall, 10 minute, if the other commissioners don't want to stay, they can leave, but we would all have, if you want to stay, you can have 10 minute access to the TV to make your general announcements. Those are some suggestions I have. I'm willing to make a motion or whatever with this, but these are my well, concerns. All right, what we can do is we can make motion and then everybody gets to talk after we get a second. We'll open it up. So motion made by Commissioner Wilson. What is the motion? <laughs> that what she just read? Well, the motion is, I, I'll go through them one by one generally. Okay, one citizen public comment, allowing the citizen to comment without us commenting. It becomes a bantering session, session with our residents. One city manager business session on the agenda. One commissioner announcement period. Um, I think that's probably, and to have a 10 minute period at the end of the meeting after it's adjourned for any commissioner to, I mean, a member of the commission, I'm sorry, I don't wanna leave, when I say commissioner, mayor, I'm referring to you yeah. also, that any member of the commission would like to have a small town hall meeting for 10 minutes, access to the camera to speak to their residents with highlights of what's going on in the district. But that's 10 minutes for, Commissioner comments and mayor comments. Ten minutes for yes, and, and then, then that. And then when the meeting is right. adjourned, to give ten minutes to any member of the commission okay. who would like to All speak right. to their residents on the TV. TV. All right. So here's second. I'll second that. So second is by Commissioner Wilson. Now we're open for comments. Any more comments? Yeah, I'm. I'm not sure I'm clear on all of them because. I need clarity, and I don't have it. Which one do you have to be clear on what I said? I'll be happy to respond on any of them. Yeah. Can we start with number one? Please. Again? Okay. What the citizen, okay, let's go with the citizen public comment. I firmly believe that when our residents come up, let them speak. Sometimes it's become a bantering session with them. It's very rude. It's, we're not, I think we should let them speak, say thank you, and then when we get to our citizens, our comments, let us, if we want to respond to things, but I think it's very rude when it becomes back and forth, and um, I just I just don't think it presents us in a, a good light. Okay, well, okay. if you may, I like to address each one okay. as we go, because I'm, I'm I don't want to get lost here and, and miss something. I guess my first question will be, the, in in developing our agenda, what's the difference between comments versus announcements? I don't think there's really, in, if you're asking me. Well, because and the reason I ask that is because oftentimes we will say that if you're making comments on the agenda, then you, this is the time you make your comments on the agenda. Any comments that is not made on the agenda is made later in the meeting, therefore is at the end. The, the original idea was that we would have comments at the front end of the meeting for items that might come up on the consent agenda. Right. And obviously, if it's a public hearing, then you can make your comments as part of that public hearing. And then at the end of the meeting, the public comments were 
just public comments that had nothing to do with any of the items on the agenda. Okay, and that's, and that's what I thought it was, and so I'm, I'm opposed to pulling those public comments off from, I'm an advocate for having public comments in those two places for that re very reason. So, so the public can speak uh, regarding the agenda, and then if they have comments that are not based on the agendas, then they still have an opportunity to speak. They're still able to speak. They're still able. I'm not taking that away. What I want to say is that I think that we need to allow the resident to come up and say what they want, and then not for us to become a bantering session. We okay. Just say thank you very much. And if you want to address things, it's a great time during your comments to address them. Okay. I think it's very rude when it becomes back and forth. Right. And, yes. um, it puts them on the. I've sat down. I've been out here for ten. I sat in this audience for ten years, and I get up here. And all of a sudden, someone starts saying something, and it becomes a bantering session back and forth. And I don't think that shows us in a professional no. light. No, I, and I understand. And I'm glad I got that, that clarified because I was thinking that we were taking away no. a public oh. opportunity to, to comment, and I didn't think that was appropriate. Uh, what was the next one? Okay. And the next one is that the city manager only needs one comment time, one time that he has bring staff um, Okay. We have him down for yeah, I, I won't touch. Yeah, I, I, I'll interrupt you there. I won't touch that one because I think that's a city manager issue. And if he's fine with it, then, then so be it. He's fine with it, he said. <laughs> yeah, typically um, I just need one point in the meeting. And most of the times that I do have something to bring up, it's an emergency item, which I think it's appropriate to keep the one in the beginning to, um, to go over the business that uh, came up at the last minute. I don't really see the use of having a second uh, comment period. All right, next. Yeah, what's the next one? Okay, the next one is um, limiting our commissioner announcements and comments to 10 minutes. Okay, I'm in favor. Okay, and <laughs> the other one, what is going easier than I thought I was when I wrote this? Um, okay, next. I felt that the consent agenda I really do believe, and maybe it's not a motion at this point, but I truly believe that we need um, to access the city manager and talk to him and regarding his questions we have so that we can resolve a lot of our questions because I think I went on further when I went on about um, being transparent. Right. I think our agendas are very transparent. Yeah, and I, I think yeah. that when you get to this point, <clears throat> if you went to the city manager, we could get a lot of questions answered. Right. And, and I, and, and, you know, the city manager and the directors around uh, to include uh, police and fire know that I generally, I generally send emails regarding the agenda to them uh, for my Q&A. But even though I send emails periodically, I will bring, pull something from the, or, or discuss something that's on the agenda only because I think it's, it needs to be made public that we're actually taking action on this. And we've considered certain, uh, certain options and or directions in which we're going but so I, I get what you're saying but not allowing uh, okay. the ability to pull something from the agenda I don't think that's a I don't think that's will serve us well okay I think what I want to say too is I understand that and, and I do understand that but I really want us please as commissioners to read the agenda it's very important that we read it we understand it before we get here um, that, that's something that I, over the years, I'm not saying, I'm not going to pick on anyone here, but over the years I've seen where you wonder if someone actually read the items, or you're concerned if they fully understood. I shouldn't say read, they probably read them, but I want to make sure that they don't understand them. Let call, please call the city manager, please call the assistant city manager to get it explained to us. Can I make a comment on that yeah, part? Yeah, okay. That part there is the reason years ago, and I know, don't matter how many long we're last week, years ago. The reason that agenda thing started was that way was because we put it out on Thursday for exact reason where they would have time to read the agenda. And if they had any questions, you call the city manager Which or assist the city manager. That's why it was. It's where we pre we started rushing them to have it out on Thursdays where they could get it, the packet to you and not wait. It used to be we got them on Monday. A long time ago, we got it on Monday afternoon. So that changed and went to Thursdays which is yes. where you're supposed to be able to get it, call in and do what you want to do. I'm not trying to stop us from having dialogue during this. I just want to enforce it, please. Um, let's get as much answered prior to, because you can make comments during it, but I think when you make the comments, it shows that you've already 
obtaining information and you're doing it more as a citizen concern. Like, I'm not going to pick on you, Commissioner, but tonight I realized when you wanted to say that you wanted to notice that there's openings. I don't know if we really need to pull the items to tell people that please apply, we've got openings. I'm not picking on you, but um, instead of pulling it, I would rather say something at that point saying, please remember we have openings on both boards. I mean, that's just, that's just yeah. an opinion. That's my opinion. I'm not picking on you, please. Don't think so. Um, because I'm not perfect. And I make a lot of mistakes up here, I'm sure, as I've went along. And you probably all can tell me what I, you don't like about what I've done. Um, so that's where I come to the transparency. That the agenda is there. The citizens, please read it if you have concerns, because that we are transparent. Okay. Is there? A, I think that's that's all yeah. I had on that part. The town, right. the, town. Um, the town hall was not part of that. Well, the town hall was, and I, I guess town hall. I'd like the the town hall where you can have ten minutes on the camera. If other commissioners don't want to stay and understand, we have to allow a few minutes for everyone. Not That's safe. after the meeting. But after the meeting, if and I'm assuming we can do that, um, I want that clarified with the attorney, that we could have maybe 10 minutes where you have an opportunity to have that so-called, I can't think of another word for it, town hall, where you could tell your residents what's going on in the district and what are the, maybe their concerns so that, and folks can stay and folks on TV can listen. Sorry, I'm rambling on now, I'm sorry. Okay. That's, All right. Is that, does that clarify? Absolutely. All right. Okay. Any more questions? Any more comments? We have a, we have a. Um, I do have a comment. Okay. I'll try to keep it less than ten minutes. <laughs> no, we're not on the ten minute one. We're not. We're not there yet. <laughs> less than ten minutes. But I appreciate that. Um, I, I I I agree with a lot of your comments and your your motion, only in part. Okay. Um, for for one, I I agree that. If we need to make a change to this agenda at any given point, I don't think that uh, it should go, it should actually be changed unbeknownst to us. I think that uh, uh, um, the city manager is, is actually responsible, is ultimately responsible for this agenda. And uh, when we start to change the procedures and the structure of, of, the, of the, uh, this agenda, I think it's, uh, uh, we're doing it right, the right way, we're doing it now. Because it should be done just like in this particular fashion. We sh it should come before us. There should be um, a motion. There should be uh, comments, and we should vote on it. Mm -hmm. And now, I have no problem with um, uh, moving the uh, commissioner's announcements uh, off of the agenda and only having the one section where we have our comments. There's not a problem at all. The only problem was the only problem that I had was that the way it was done. So, I agree with you in part when it comes to that. Not a problem at all. Um, one of the, 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 uh, the things you, you mentioned um, concerning the city manager's time, uh, if, he, if he's okay with uh, only having one item on there where he can speak, that's, that's perfect as well. One of the issues that I, 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 I only I, I disagree in part is the fact that um, um, the transparency part. And you're right, we do have uh, access to uh, our agendas. The citizens have access to um, uh, public records uh, requests. All that information is definitely available. And I, don't, I do know that I send out a lot of emails, text messages, uh, phone calls um, every single day. Uh, but I also receive phone calls from citizens who's tuning in for the first time or the second time and trying to follow what we're doing and may not know that all this information is here. And I received those phone calls from them, and they're saying, well, well what are you guys doing? What is going on over here and over there? And uh, I'll explain it to them. And, and, I, and I, I, I speak to them in a, in, a, in, a, uh, in a manner to get them to bring them up to speed. And I'll say, hey, look, uh, we covered that item uh, several meetings ago. Take a look at this meeting to, to try to bring them up to speed. There's always uh, room for transparency when it comes to what we do here as a city. When we talk about our tax dollars, how we operate, all the things that we do uh, for our citizens, there's going to always be room for transparency. Uh, I know we may have uh, some disagreement about how transparent we are based on what we have. So a lot of the questions that I ask during the meetings, I already know the answers to those questions. I don't do it for me. 
I do it for the citizens that I represent out there. They're out there wondering what's going on. Why do they keep pushing this button and say yes? Why is everybody saying yes? Why they, everything they say yes to. And, and again, some people will read, some people won't. But I feel I still have an obligation to the folks that won't read. I have an obligation to the folks that uh, will not uh, pick up the agenda or go out online. I still have that, that obligation to them. And uh, in an effort for transparency, yeah, I would like to uh, make sure that they know um, everything that, that they need to know about what's going on with their roads, their streets, their stop signs, their traffic lights. And I think that, uh, uh, that we owe that, that much to them, whether they read it or not. Uh, also, I, I think that um, uh, when we start uh, looking at uh, uh, the issue of transparency and, and how we, we operate, um, I, I totally agree with uh, your, your, your idea, thoughts of letting the citizens speak, thank them for their comments, and, and if we need to make a comment, make the comment at, during our section. So I think that's, that is absolutely, absolutely the right way to do things. And uh, finally, I just also wanted to uh, mention the fact about the, the, the 10 minutes. Um, not a problem with, with, with the 10 minutes, and, and again, like I said, a lot of the items that I cover, I know the answer to a lot of those items, but again, there's folks out there that just, just don't know it, and I feel I do have an obligation to, to make sure that they that they have the transparency so they'll know that I'm covering those items uh, for them. Um, but the 10 minutes, um, now having the, the, having the 10 minutes to make comments, it's not a problem. Because again, I can, I can, I can rifle through it, and a lot, of, a lot of times I have questions that I, I need somebody from, come, out, come out from the back. I think we've all been there. We've all had somebody come out from the back to say, hey, I got a question about this. I've seen every commissioner and mayor sitting on this diocese have to call somebody from that back to ask a question about something on, on this agenda. Um, so again, it takes a little time to do that. That cuts into your 10 minutes. So are we gonna stop the clock? And my question would be for you, Commissioner Wilson, will we be stopping the clock if that has to happen? or? How would, would your, your, your motion handle a situation like that? Or would a 10 minutes continue on um, if we come into a situation like that? Yeah, that's okay. just a question for you, Sorry. yes. I understand and your concerns, okay, and you're concerned with that. I look at it that most of my, my questions to the directors or anyone is usually done before I ever get here. I'm one that acts on something, a resident calls me today, I try to take care of it tomorrow. And so I don't hold things. So um, if there's a pothole, I call Steve and tell him about the pothole. So I'm not, I may call them up, yes, once in a while and understand that. But I think that should be during our 10 minutes. But I think you could use the 10 minutes for those questions, but then use your 10 minutes at the end, that town hall, after the meeting ends, to tell folks, hey, we've got three openings on the police board and my district is not represented very well. We need somebody to come forward. Come on, get involved. You know, when we're talking to residents on the phone, you are telling them these things to get involved. And um, so I kind of want to separate the two so that you can, it's a chance to have a town hall meeting without a town hall meeting. Do you know what I'm saying? Without bringing people in to where they have the opportunity to listen to you on the TV. Um, you can tell them at the, you can tell your residents Hey, if you're not going to listen to the whole meeting, would you please listen at the very end because I gave you some information regarding District 4 or District 2 spoke up about something going on. So um, I guess I'm kind of giving, trying to give the best of both worlds. You get 10 minutes to make your comments or questions and then 10 minutes to use as, I keep saying this, a town hall meeting. I'm sorry, I keep repeating things 100 times. But it's your opportunity to give your residents the information instead of being here you know, doing it 10 minutes, it's your time. Every, everyone here would get 10 minutes if, if they want it. Sorry. Yeah. Well, I, I certainly understand. Um, again, uh, I, I still slightly disagree, but um, I, will I have watched other, said. I've watched other, other commission meetings as well. I, I've, I've watched them, I've seen them uh, an hour. I've seen them go as, as late as um, 10, 11 o'clock at night. I've even watched some of the, the old meetings in this very diocese before I got here oh. going to 10, 11 o'clock at night. I've, I've seen that happen. But I, I, I one thing I do want to say when it comes to citizens' comments, and um, you may have 5, 10, 12 people want to talk about the same thing. 
I think, again, our obligation is to listen. Even if they want to talk about the exact same thing, we should give them the opportunity to say the same thing over and over and over again and not cut them off and say, well, uh, y'all talk about the same thing, so I'm going to cut you off right there and, and people go their merry way. So we, we have some issues that we have to deal with as well. So citizens should have the right to, to express themselves uh, within that three minutes. And if someone comes behind them and want to say the exact same thing, I think they should have the, the right to do so as well. I don't want to take that away from by any means. Yeah. I'm just saying I think which, we need which, to say thank you. Yeah. And go on to the next one and not get into com a bantering com session. Comment on what, that. Which is still. I agree. Make one comment on that? No, go ahead. When they do the three minutes, most of them go over three minutes, but there's not going to be where you cannot make comments. You know, mm -hmm. it's a. Uh, nobody, if I've asked, I asked not too long ago, if you're going to get up and you got 10 people there that are going to say the same thing, just say it. Don't mean they're all going to do it because most times they don't. They still come up to the podium and still say the same things. Mm -hmm. I have said, if you're going to make re re same reciprocal talks, so, you know, just say, okay, ditto, I want to do that too. But if not, come on up there and say it. We've never stopped them from coming up there and mm -hmm. saying it. Never. What I'm trying to stress is to say is that let's just say thank you. Let's yeah. not get into this. I have seen it so many times that it becomes a argument. And I don't think that we put our best foot forward that way. This is a chance for a citizen to come say something, let them say it, and we just say thank you. And then I, we I have do. an opportunity later. You know, I kind of like this discussion we're having right now because it's very calm. And mm -hmm. this is the way the meeting should go. That, and I agree with you. You know, we can add that to the motion that any changes to the agenda, I'm sure the mayor would, I would hope he wouldn't object, yeah. um, any changes to present them before the commission. That's all it takes. You know, discussion is good. And we, no one wants to be blindsided, side, is that the right word? Nobody, and we want to go ahead and we want to create a professional decorum here. That's what I'm trying to get to. All right. And I, I, I agree, I agree again, I agree wholeheartedly with you. And um, again, I, I, I think that um, when it comes to uh, the transparency, um, I believe that uh, we have an obligation to the citizens to uh, be able to to go down the items that need to, that we need to go down uh, for the sake of those that are just tuning in or just sitting in here for the very first time, I think we still have an obligation to them as well. So that's the part I just disagree with, and that's fine. Um, and and, if, and, if, and if, we vote, if we vote the 10 minutes, then you know, we'll make it work. And, and if we decide to do the town hall uh, after the meeting, then we'll make it work. That's, that's, that's and fine. And here's the op opportunity is that if you, when you said that you want to discuss changes, if it doesn't work, we change it. That's right. We come back to the meeting during our time and we discuss it and say, I don't think it's working for me. You know, we got to stop. We have to work as, and I'm not saying we have to abide by sunshine, but we need to look as a united front representing the city and not yeah. where people talk about and say all they do is argue. Yeah. We need to show professionalism. We need to discuss things soundly and move forward. Right. Okay, that's that's what I'm getting yeah. at. Well, I, I agree. I, I certainly agree. All right. Commissioner first. From what I've heard, uh, it sounds like we're all in general agreement on most of the items that uh, Commissioner Wilson laid out there. I don't have any objections to any of it, <clears throat> maybe with the minor objection to the consent agenda that uh, we shouldn't be pulling items on there. I don't have a problem with the uh, commissioner pulling an item if he needs clarification, mm -hmm. but I do think that it's incumbent upon that commissioner to contact someone before the meeting to see if he can get his questions answered for him. And then if not, if it does present a problem, by all means, pull the item during the commission meeting and we can discuss it. Um, yeah. The rest of it, you know, one staff report up front, the public comments, uh, I don't have a problem with leaving them in the front and the back uh, as long as the public comments up front are only deal with the items on the agenda. If they don't, if they're not on the agenda, then they wait until the end. Um, no staff action items are necessary at the end and the comments from the citizens and the comments from the commissioners. I like that a 10 minute uh, time limit on that. And 
10 additional minutes afterwards to, you know, do whatever you want to do if that's your wish. So All right. All right. What, one of the things, I went to Winter Gardens meeting last week, sit in just to see, and they had a lot of stuff on there, but they didn't do a lot of uh, uh, other things. They even got up and read, all the commissioners read off different proclamations and took, that was where the, most of the time was. They had their agenda laid out. If you look at their agenda, they have no, no public hearing things like we do. They don't have a lot of things on their agenda. I was kind of surprised, but when the mayor got through, he got up and come by and shook my hand and said, We're, we were late tonight. They were only there 42 <laughs> minutes. I'm like, Ooh. So, and, and it is, gets gets a little rowdy here, so we got to cut that out, and that's why we got that civility code back there, and we got it on the back of here. So we're going to all, all try to live by it and go by it. The, um, if a resident comes up to a meeting, and we're, anytime we're doing these public hearings, they're free to talk. We open the public up to them where they can talk. The consent agenda is something you have. If you've got a question, mm -hmm. send it to the city manager and let him answer then you, then you can say that. If you can't get him and it no, doesn't answer, then you can spring it up to me. But I think what she's come up with is a good way to do this. And we can, like I said, I never thought about having a public city hall afterwards, but that's a good idea. If you want to stay and go over some of the stuff in your district, you, that's a good thing to do. So I'm, I'm in favor of it. Like I said, I think we need to do some tightening up on all, all factions of this thing. So. Uh, the, uh, the other thing I, I will tell you, most cities, and I would take and love to see, do not have TV. They say, I have been told by the, these other cities that the TV makes it draw out even longer because people <laughs> like to get on TV and talk. So that was one of the problems. They told me they didn't have it. So, but I like having the TV because there's some people that cannot get here, mm -hmm. and some of the people that are working hard come home in the afternoon, they need to have it. So I don't have a problem. But a lot of cities don't have it. So we've got a motion and have a second. I'm gonna say one more thing, sorry. I'm not looking to not have you pull things from the agenda, consent agenda. I just want us to do our due diligence so, before yes, so that we can, I think that's important. Um, that, that's where I'm going with that, okay? All right. So, All right. okay, I'm sorry. Can we restate let me, the let me, motion? Let me, okay. Here, let me just restate the motion <laughs> as I think I understand it. Can I ask a question before you restate the motion about the part with the, um, well, we talk about the town hall part uh, where uh, we have that additional 10 minutes to go over items uh, for our, our district. Will there be staff members available to answer any questions that may come up as a result of that? That, that would be the, the question that, I would have. Would they be available oh. 10 minutes after the meeting? I, you, uh, I, I think I did have a chance up? to discuss some of this with um, Commissioner Wilson today, and I think that was part of the reason that we have the 10 minutes with staff here and to get those types of questions answered. And then after that, the town hall type um, meeting after that would be for announcements that you want to just give that are general information that you have that you already know the answers for. If you don't know the answer for it, you need staff. I wanted to clarify too, because a lot of times um, staff may have something to do and they say, do I have to come to the meeting tonight? We'll have them here for um, the consent agenda, and if they don't have something on the regular agenda, typically if they have something else to do, I say you don't have to be here. Um, if we have that and we know a certain time, or we know that they need to be here, I can have them here, which is another reason why it's nice if you all call me and say, you know, I have an issue with this or something and I want to get into that more, more deeply, then I can have a, a staff person here. But if there's no questions and, um, it seems like everybody understands the issue and I don't have a staff person here then typically you know I can answer some of your concerns on it but maybe not as deeply as having that staff member here so I think in the in, the intent of what Commissioner Wilson uh, correct me if I'm wrong Commissioner was the first 10 minutes are issues that you need staff to to weigh in on or to perhaps advise you on and the second are more general things that you just want to advise people of that you already know the answer to I want to make it well, more like that town hall meeting that, yeah. you know, it's a great opportunity because, you know, when, we have, when you've had a town hall meeting, you may not have had the opportunity to have it on TV. Whereas if you have, I'm sorry, I'm looking, you haven't, if you haven't had the opportunity to have it on TV, but here you have the opportunity to have it on TV yeah. and to focus to your residents and tell them, I spoke the last 10 minutes on what's going on in my district, please. It's yeah. on YouTube, it's on city website, 
tune in, listen, and you'll get everything that I, what's going on. You may want to talk about the street lights or the road paving or the sidewalks. I mean, there's things that you've dealt with with your district. I've had things with my district, and you've had things. We all have had things. Yes. So it's kind of an opportunity to kind of get that word out. Yeah, yeah. Scott. All right. Yeah, Scott, well, I, that, I certainly agree that, with that. Yes. Right. Is that something that we need to break out separate than no? Or is it well, well, we just sit here and wait. Motion? Yeah. Let me. Let me. I think kind of summarize everything in one motion. Commissioner Wilson can tell me if I got it right or not. Um, so I, I think there are four kind of action items. Um, one is to remove the second staff action items list on the agenda. That goes away. And then two, the commission announcements at the start of the meeting goes away, but we keep it at the end of the meeting um, that's two, 10 minute. ten minute time limit per commissioner, and then a 10 minute period after the meeting adjourns for any town hall type announcements that commissioners want to stay and announce to the residents via the, the camera. That would be item three. And then item four is any changes to the general outline of the agenda come to the commission uh, before being implemented. And then there are two kind of policy encouragement items. <laughs> One is that uh, members of the city commission do not engage in a question and answer session with residents as part of the resident public comments. They can comment um, after the residents have spoken as part of their 10 minute commissioner comments. And then the second kind of policy encouragement is that before pulling agenda items um, that uh, uh, you speak with the city manager ahead of time um, to see if you can get that resolved uh, before the meeting. So four okay. action items, two kind of policy encouragement, not hard and fast rules, but principles yeah. that you might want to live by. Maybe make right. every effort. Maybe make well, every effort so to is, talk to the city manager. Let, is that your commit? Is that your? That's that. Yes, you said it better. I'll okay. second All right. that. Yes, sir. All right. All in favor of the uh, uh, Commissioner Wilson's uh, changes to the uh, dies vote now. Carried unanimously. Okay. All right. That starts June the fifteenth, I guess. We don't have a meeting in first of June. Do we? All right. No, we don't. All right. June fifteenth. All right. Uh, I have two. I have two citizens here. First is Mr. Moyer. Three minutes, and we want. We have to start sticking to our our okay. time limits too. Come on up. My name's Jim Moyer. I live at I mean, Arden Park North here in Okoe. I'm here to mention. My personal views on 9-11, I want to make sure that, or a couple of my personal views, I want to make sure that you understand that it has nothing to do with a board or, or council that I've had the honor to be appointed to. It's just a couple personal comments. Uh, Pearl Harbor and 9-11 are very, very close to my heart. I've seen during my lifetime Pearl Harbor just kind of uh, lost a lot of its uh, enthusiasm. Oftentimes on December 7th, I'll say it's Pearl Harbor and people say, what? You know, and I really don't want that to happen for 9-11. Uh, the 20th um, year anniversary is coming up. Um, if and when it becomes before the council, I would encourage them to support some kind of initiative here in Ocoee. I do have four, uh, I mean, five copies of uh, what I pulled from Google, some of uh, Central Florida activities that took place according to the, the website I pulled it from in 2018 and also 20, I mean, yeah, 2019 and also 2020 in the middle of the, of the COVID-19. Um, I 
think it's very important that we remember 9-11. I personally uh, was responsible for collecting donations for the Salvation Army in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and ship them up to New York. I also had the honor of, of meeting in person uh, the governor of Pennsylvania some years back who ended up becoming the first ever um, Homeland Security Secretary. And trust me, from meeting him, he's a lot bigger in person than, than he is on TV. Uh, fine gentleman. But I've just come here uh, to encourage you, if and when it comes before the council, anything to do with um, remembering 9-11, I would encourage you to support it. Thank you for my time, and God bless you all. Thank you, sir. All right, next is Scott Kennedy. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mayor and Commissioners. Um, my name is Scott Kennedy. I'm a citizen of Ocoee. Um, I submitted a prepared comment, but an ad hoc comment, an ad hoc comment. I thought that was a very wise uh, discussion and motion, and uh, thank you all for that. Um, after attending uh, the last meeting, it was kind of funny. I was going to work, and I listened to an ad for the, I think it was the Cancer Society, and they were talking about how they're having a problem. Uh, people weren't doing their screenings during COVID. And now you go and you go to the doctor and all of a sudden you have stage three or stage four cancer. And um, it struck me, obviously, um, we've all had on our thoughts and prayers people who lost loved ones, uh, lost a business, lost their job, lost their home. Um, but there's probably a lot of not so obvious consequences to COVID. And it occurred to me, because um, coming to the meeting, that one of the ones for me was I used to come to all the meetings um, for years, and I hadn't been to a commission meeting since October of 2019. Um, and I was in the dark on, on some issues. And um, as we know, uh, mentioned 9-11, that's good timing, legend, a legend, uh, federal judge Damon Keith, he died at uh, 96 years old in 2019, still serving on the federal bench. Um, he wrote an important decision um, about the 9-11 attacks on open and public hearings. And he coined the phrase, we call it now, democracy dies in darkness. And I think we all need to remember that and, uh, and be engaged. Um, I also recall that when I would come to meetings, I would regularly see the same people, business leaders, community leaders that I knew, and, um, and I haven't seen those people in a couple of years. Um, I've lost contact with them. Um, government can't solve all problems. We used to work on projects together, different HOAs, different communities, and do things that maybe weren't appropriate for the commission. It was great. Uh, I personally resolved, I thought about this, I've, I've committed I'm going to start coming to all the meetings through the end of the year. I'm going to speak, I'm going to get involved in the issues. And I thought if I just shared my comment, uh, maybe it might encourage someone else that used to come, that used to be engaged. Um, I think as we re-emerge from COVID, um, we need to, we need to re-engage and renew our commitment. Uh, last, I want to close, I also noted um, the city staff, the city employees, the commissioners, the mayor, um, while I kind of got lost in the dark, you were here. Um, and I just wanted to say thank you. Um, we appreciate your dedication, your belief in local government, and your belief in OCOE. And uh, I didn't get to say that last time, but thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Let's just... Um Commissioner Firstner. Uh, staff comments, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't have anything, Mayor. Okay. Comm <laughs> Commissioner Firstner. Okay. Um, May 16th through the 22nd this week is National EMS Week. We want to extend our thanks and our gratitude to all those emergency uh, medical service workers that are out there 24 7. 
They do a fantastic job. I want to thank the Public Works Department for procuring and, and placing the Sand Hill Crane Crossing signs out, at least in my district. Uh, they're in pretty prominent areas. And uh, it's, it's a welcome thing to see out there because people just don't pay attention. They don't pay attention to children on the road, let alone birds. And uh, we're really blessed to have those animals in our town, really. There's something else. So thank you, Public Works. Um, I want to thank McCraney Property Company and all the police personnel that uh, were out there working last uh, Saturday, May 15th. It was uh, the second time in six months that they did a food distribution um, here in Oak Coey. And uh, I'll tell you what, the turnout was fantastic, and they put a lot of free food out there to the people of West Orange County. And lastly, uh, the Blood Mobile will be at the police department this Thursday, May 20th, from 11 until 4. Go out and uh, make the donation that helps everybody out there in the community. Thank you. Commissioner Wilson. Yes, thank you. Um, try to make this brief. Um, we are going to point where the Coe Police Department and the Coe Women's Club and the Coe Lions Club is going to plan their shred event for September 18th. Um, it is something that we do as a city, so I guess I'm asking for the city's support that we they're agreeable as long as we don't have any restrictions regarding COVID at that time, which we shouldn't. Can we just say? We want to have that. We want to plan the shred okay, event. Yes, all of us agree to say yes. Yep. Yeah, if, they, if everyone agrees, we're okay with that. Everybody okay with that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm also planning and not competing with your date of May 27th. I know, I, I'm not competing. Um, <laughs> I saw that. Um, you know, we have a new dog park in District 2, which is exciting oof, because oof. A, a lot of folks are going there. It's kind of nice to see everyone, people there. Um, I'd like to have a very brief ribbon cutting for the dog park that morning. I've talked to city staff, but I'd like to see if the commission's agreeable. As I say, I'm not competing with Mr. Brinson's day. Uh, but this would be like nine o'clock in the morning. I'd like to do a very brief, it's warm. Um, it's a community park. We don't have a lot of parking. So it's kind of gonna be a very small event. So, um, I mean, the commission there and just a few chairs if people need to sit down. But again, it's gonna be, I would like to make it just a very small event because again, you know there's about six parking spaces. <laughs> and it's tough. It's really a walking park. Just call Sherry and set it up through there. Who can come, who can't from us? That we can what? Call Sherry and have her set it up. Well, I want to make sure the commission's well, okay. Well, that's what I'm saying. And as long she as you don't mind, Commissioner, that it's the morning at 9 o'clock. The, the more the merrier. Okay, fine. Thank you. So if we're all agreeable to that one, we can plan that. Um, I'm going to read something that I received from Joy today. I don't know. Are you going to talk about Memorial Day? Was there anything? Memorial Day? Yeah. Was yeah. there anything? Yeah, that's that? okay. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I'm just going to write that Joy Wright sent me this because one of my residents did write me and asked me if we were doing any Memorial Day here. And we don't have a Memorial Day ceremony planned, but they do plan to post pictures online of previous ceremonies, which they did last year, which was wonderful. Additionally, the city will continue its year-long tradition, years-long tradition of placing a Coe Remembers wreaths at the city's Memorial Wall and at Woodlawn Memorial Park. On Wednesday, May 26th, our Parks and Recreation Department and City Clerk's Office staff will assist American Legion number 109 Again, this year I'm placing American flags on the veterans' graves at Ocoee Cemetery. And they'll be taking pictures and posting them on Facebook. So again, um, it's a kind of a change. You know, we're getting back into the world of doing things, but this is right now what is planned. And I think that was, oh, do the commissioners, are they, I don't know if anyone's registered or they have. I am. The ethics training on um, this Wednesday, this Thursday. Florida League of Thursday. City, Tri County League of City on Thursday. If you haven't registered, you need to see if there's spaces because due to COVID, they have very limited spaces. And I know that we are um, Tri County directors come from UCF, and UCF has some very stringent rules as to spacing. And so um, it's at Winter Park. Yeah, it's it's in City. Winter Park. It's on the 20th. But please um, contact Tri County League and if you see if there's spaces available, because as you know, we all have to do this. And I think that is it. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Oliver. 
<clears throat> we're still continuing to uh, do our weekly food drive um, uh, every Friday at 2, 8, 2 p.m. At, um, at the First Baptist Church of Okoy, which is uh, 106 uh, West Ohio Street. Uh, we do it every, fr every Friday. We're going to continue to do that uh, throughout the summer. Um, again, um, the, the food usually gets dropped off right at about 1 o'clock, 1.30. And um, the last week uh, that we did it, uh, the food was gone by 4 o'clock. So um, if you know of anyone that is in need of, of any food, uh, uh, any, any, any type of food, we have lots of different types of food, bread, milk, um, chocolates, which I was able to take to some of my kids at school, uh, <laughs> and they loved it. <laughs> but um, please uh, have them come by uh, uh, First Baptist Church of Okoy uh, every Friday about 2, 2 p.m. They can pick up uh, a big food box. Also, uh, summer jobs program. Um, we have partnered with Career Source uh, for some summer jobs program, and um, that is uh, that'll be up and running uh, starting the first week in June. If if, if you're interested, uh, if you're a Koi High School or, or a, a student that lives in the city of Okoy and you're interested in uh, in having a summer job, uh, you can contact Career Source. You can go to um, CareersourceCentralFlorida.com. That is CareersourceCentralFlorida.com and forward slash summer youth, uh, careersourcecentralflorida.com uh, forward slash summer youth. You can fill out an application there. Uh, uh, let them know that in the comment section that you are, are a Okoy resident and uh, you will get uh, first choice at a great job uh, for the summer. So uh, there'll be a chance to uh, earn a little money, put a little money in your pockets and uh, uh, help your parents out if you need to help your parents out with some school clothes or school supplies. So it'll be a great way to uh, um, earn a little money and, um, and, and learn how to save a little bit as well. <clears throat> a couple weeks ago, uh, the, uh, uh, there was a Senate bill, Senate Bill 678 passed, uh, Senator Bracey passed, uh, helped pass the bill, uh, Bill 678 was signed in, uh, into law by Governor uh, DeSantis, uh, which actually takes, a, this, this bill takes effect July 1st. What it is, it's the Okoy Scholarship Program. Any eligible students can qualify for an annual scholarship uh, uh, for a little over six thousand dollars a year. The bill was created. Uh, the, the bill was created for direct descendants of the victims of the uh, 1920 Okoy massacre, and for uh, current African American residents in Okoy. Eligible students may uh, start applying as early as July 1st. Uh, I'll, I will provide a link to the city manager see if he can actually place that on the website and also to, uh, uh, on, our, on our Facebook page in an effort to uh, uh, apply for that particular scholarship. Now one of the things that, I, that I, I, I see about this scholarship that I want to take, I want to take a little further and I've had some conversation with Senator Bracey about it, is um, I think that as we move forward with this type of scholarship, it would be great if it, if it was offered to almost any kid that lived in the city of Okoy. So again, as we're teaching uh, this, this, uh, the Koi Massacre in our schools starting uh, in April, I think it would be a, a great opportunity for any kid that's, that's learning about the Koi Massacre to have the opportunity to uh, apply for this scholarship, not just for the African American kids, but for any kid that's learning about this and they want to be able to apply for that scholarship, I think they should, be, should have the, uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, opportunity to do so. So as they move forward with this, I'll be pushing really hard to open this up to uh, more kids in our city. Uh, also, um, I know last meeting I asked about uh, um, an update on Lake, Lake Meadow report. I know that uh, there was a report that should have came out by now. We still may be working on this. Uh, is this something that we we are still working on? A report about the water tables for Lake Meadows. Um, again, uh, we have citizens that they won't read or they'll watch. But I think if the uh, public works director is still here, he can comment on that. Steve, are you in the back? Yes, Commissioner. Um, just a general update on the Lake Meadow um, area. We've met with Orange County Storm Water Department, discussed a lot of options. We're still looking into more. Everything, the lake is going down. Yeah. Um, there still have been no buildings or private structures that have flooded aside from a hen house. Um, but we're looking at some other options. It is just a uh, 
it's an enclosed basin that doesn't drain anywhere. And the only way to pipe water somewhere, if we could get a permit, would be right at this point prohibitively expensive. Um, but we are looking at some other options, and um, that's kind of where we're at. Okay. And, but we do, just so everyone knows, the city goes, because it's an enclosed basin, goes above and beyond. Um, a normal storm they design for is like a 25 year worst storm or 25% chance of the storm's going to hit a rainstorm. We make designers, developers um, plan and accommodate a 100 year storm. So knowing that there is no place for water to go, which is why we haven't had flooding of any of the residences in there. So we're going to continue doing that. Even though everybody wants us to cut them slack on that, we know we can't. But we are working with Orange County to figure something out. We appreciate that. At least I know you, I hear you guys are, are uh, discussing emergency water pumping uh, out of that, that basin as well. So I think that's, that's great. So thank you so much for continuing to work on that. And I've uh, been a part of some of those conversations, but not all of them. But I know that uh, some of the residents are still interested in, uh, or the uh, unincorporated Orange County residents who may become part of our, <laughs> our cities hopefully soon, uh, they're very interested in knowing what would be the emergency plan if uh, we hit that 100-year storm. So thank you so much for that. I appreciate it. Uh, also, um, I had an opportunity to uh, talk with a city planner concerning the widening of Clark Road, and I've reached out to several residents uh, from Orchard Park, Prairie Lakes, uh, Hackney Prairie, and Westchester concerning the widening of Clark Road. Um, and one of the, um, the main things I'm hearing is uh, they want to be able to uh, have left turn, left lane, uh, left lane, left, left turns heading southbound on Clark Road as they widen it. There's a lot of construction going on with the townhouses right there, but um, this will be an opportunity right now since we're in the, we're actually we're in, in the design phase of the widening of Clark Road. This right now will be the opportunity for citizens of those subdivisions to get involved and to see how they could get that left turn signal built into the design of, of that, that project. So it's an ongoing project, and uh, I will um, reach out again to, uh, uh, to Mike, Mike Rumor, which is our city planner, uh, regarding this in this design phase. And if I need to have uh, separate meetings with their HOAs, I would, I would certainly do so with, with you, your HOAs, and, and pass the information out if we're able to uh, add that into the design of the widening of Clark Road. So those are the major thoroughfares, the major uh, uh, connections to it that, that would like those left turn signals. And uh, finally, before I yield back to the mayor, I will leave you with, with this. Life is about discovering who we are. Leading is about striving to become better than we are and helping, ev and, and helping everything and everyone around us to become better as well. Let the words inspire you motivate you, encourage you, and empower you to become the best you can be. That was written by Lolly Dasker, who was actually a writer for Inc. Magazine in 2021. Thank you, I yield back to the mayor. All right, before I go to Commissioner Brinson, uh, Commissioner Wilson, you have one more comment. I'm sorry, I knew there was something else I wanted to say. Um, I'm sure most of you have gotten letters from the Florida League of Cities regarding um, legislature that they have once again tried to preempt local home rule. And regarding home-based businesses, um, Florida League of Cities has drafted a letter that they're asking for cities to please um, tailor and send to them so they can present it to the governor before he signs this bill. Um, we, I feel and we all feel that we as local should regulate local and we shouldn't let the legislature regulate our local businesses. And if you want to look more involved in it, it is, um, Bill, House Bill 403, home-based businesses. And so I'm asking that we ask the city manager to, um, should I say, pen this letter, letting the governor know that we would prefer to regulate home-based businesses ourselves and not let the legislature dictate to us. So I don't know if anyone else read, has read this. Did, but did you say House Bill 403? It's um, CS slash House Bill 403, home-based businesses. It's regarding noise, parking. You can call the League of Cities and they'll give it to you. They, yeah, Flor and if you look at, uh, you've gotten some email from Florida League of Cities. I know we've all getting, we're all getting yeah. it, and there should have been something that came today from them. 
regarding the letter and what they're asking cities to do. Um, again, we, we really, if anyone doesn't know what home rule is, it means let us regulate home. Let us take care of what happens here. Right. So um, I'm hoping that we can ask, if, as a joint effort, the, the commission ask the city manager to please pen a letter saying that we would prefer to regulate ourselves. You can get a consensus basis. for that. Everybody okay? Yeah, yep. so that come from the city manager or the crew? It'll mayor? come from, it'll go from us. Okay. It'll come from us, but it will be for him to do it. And there's a, there's a copy, I really hate these form letters, but they sent a form letter to us today, and I believe you got it. Um, should have been today, I believe, or yesterday, showing you the letter. I think the best way to do it would be from the mayor and yeah. the city commission and just have sure. the mayor sign it. Right. Okay, so you get that put together Thanks. and then we could. Yes, we'll take care of it. Commissioner Brinson, she used up five minutes of your time. I see. <laughs> I apologize. That's okay. That's okay. I, You're not ten minutes yet. No, not yet. Not yet. And, and, I'll, and I'll try not to be. Uh, I know uh, Dr. Moyer just left, uh, but I, I too, uh, agree with him. And I, I think there's some movement afoot in the city with some of the boards uh, to recognize the events of 9-11. 9-11 uh, has a special place in my life as well. Uh, for those who do not know, I was actually in the Pentagon on 9-11, so I was uh, subject to a lot of that nonsense. Uh, so it does have a special place <clears throat> in my heart. As far as community involvement, that's the next thing I want to talk about, community involvement as well as community engagement. Uh, I'm getting calls from, especially from uh, elderly or, or, or disabled uh, residents and their need of help. Uh, and that help can come in by way of pulling their trash can off the road, putting it back up towards their house, and as far uh, uh, as much as helping them uh, cut their grass. So I would ask neighbor to neighbor uh, for us to get engaged in our communities to see those uh, residents in our communities who may be in need of assistance because they're not able to do so themselves. Uh, community leaders are coming together. We're gonna be discussing some solutions I would ask uh, that the residents, if you have a problem, uh, one or two issues on your, in your community, feel free to email me at lbrinson, B-R-I-N-S-O-N.org, uh, at Ako I'm sorry, lbrinson at Uh and just email me a couple of solutions you think that can help you in, in your uh, community. I think it's very important that the community be engaged in some of our leadership discussions, but unfortunately we can't have all the community there because we just, there's not enough time in the day. Uh, patience, as we move closer to normal, this is gonna be a big one because as we all know, uh, from the governor all the way over to the CDC to, to our here locally, as just discussed, we're making decisions and, and uh, doing things regarding COVID-19. So I would ask that everyone uh, still be patient. Uh, try your best not to uh, lose your cool when it comes to COVID-19 and the effects thereof uh, because it's here and it's not going away anytime soon. Again, patience. Patience is a big thing for me right now because we have a lot of construction going on in the city of Ocoee. And I was driving on the street three days in one week and I saw uh, mild cases of road rage. I would ask you to be patient. Uh, these big trucks, and I think one of the commissioners just mentioned some of the, the challenges the roadways will face because of the construction trucks. Uh, trucks are gonna clog up the roadways. That's just, that's the nature of growth. That, those are what we refer to when I was growing up as growing pains. And so I would ask you to, to, to be patient. Be, be patient with, uh, not only with the construction folks, but also with your fellow uh, drivers. Uh, Okoi.org, that's our website. If you're looking for it, because I get a lot of calls on what, what, what's going on in all these projects. <clears throat> Okoi.org is your, is your go-to place. If you go to, go to our website, it will tell you the projects that are going on around the city, whether they're residential or whether they're commercial, and they give you a sense of not only uh, that we're growing, but how we're growing. And it tells you where we're growing. So. There's a lot of construction going on right now on West Road, uh, right there at the 429 and also right by the uh, golf course. Uh, a lot of people are asking questions. 
uh, is there going to be a grocery store? Well, there is plans to be a grocery store there. Uh, and so go to the website, and it will share with you a lot of information. Or, of course, come to the commission meeting and ask us when you come here. Uh, the last one I'm going to talk about is something that I just had three conversations today is remember yard waste collection there are guidelines and those guidelines once again is on the Okoe website but if you do not know what those guidelines are and you cannot find those guidelines on the website I would encourage you to call City Hall and they will they will get you in contact with someone who can share with you and or send with send to you those guidelines by email uh, because it is available and is it something that's is not going away either uh, people are still working from home which means they have more time on their hands to do yard work and uh, COVID-19 vaccinations are still available I also encourage you to get that and that is all I have Mr. Mayor. all right uh, City Hall is going to be closed on Memorial Day Monday May the 31st the City Commission meeting scheduled for June the 1st has been canceled the next regular City Commission meeting will be Tuesday June the 15th all right the 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 Empire inspire uplift and unite music event is happening Saturday May the 29th starting at 2 30 p.m. at Bill Breeze Park experience uplifting and inspire music by CC Wynum's Brotherly Love, the Isaacs, and local artists arrive, arrive early to claim your spot among our socially distanced concert seating and also enjoy a variety of diverse menu options from some of the finest Central Florida food trucks. So the other issue is the, um, once again, the lights. Is anybody talking to Duke about the lights we've asked for? Ingram Road and down on uh, south on the uh, McGuire Road. Mayor, they, um, we've been meeting with Duke Energy. We've entered into an agreement for them to do the design where we had to pay a, a token amount of money. There is money in the budget for those, and they are moving forward. We've been riding herd now that we're coming out of um, all the COVID restrictions, and we're getting a better response than we all were. Right. The other, and I know this is not too, I think it goes through the CRA. They have never put lots up on Highway 50. We're supposed to have the new lights for Highway 50, and there's never been done. I'll have to get with um, Ginger Corliss, who's uh, it is the CRA, to double check. Road. I think that's been approved, if I'm not mistaken, Rob. I thought I know it was approved, but I mean, there ain't no lights out there. We'll have to follow up on that. Yeah. Did you know anything about that, Rob? No, Marin. Actually, I'm I'm surprised to hear that. I remember we went through um, quite a bit of negotiations with them. And we actually got them to change their standard light yeah. fixture that they would allow. We were one of the first ones to get the LEDs put in, but. Um, Not done right. yet. Okay. So somebody well, check into it. Well, now's a good time dealing with Duke because yeah. you, know, you all will see the franchise agreement come up here again some point in the next yeah. six weeks or so. So, uh, and they're aware of that. So I think that may be why Steve has seen some improvement in their communications from him yeah. too. Yeah. Also, okay. Also, Mr. Moyer, I was gonna tell you that it, it, on May the 29th program, we will have some stuff pertaining to the Memorial Day. Uh, the one group, the Brother Love group, they're, they're a big into that. They have uh, a couple of music things that people are going to be really hard to keep your tears from going on about Arlington and the walls and, and stuff like that. So we're going to try to bring something up there that day at the end and do a remembrance of Memorial Day on that day also. So just to let you know that. All right. Everybody see you back June the 15th.